Then the next source that we'll be looking at is the find jobs from LinkedIn source, which works more or less the, um, the same way. So you head over here, find jobs from LinkedIn has the same function here. So imagine you already had another table where you were looking for jobs. You can exclude that from here so that, um, you won't be, you know, running into any duplicates, which is always nice. You can, um, use this to find jobs at, you know, tables, imagine the table that we worked on earlier to find companies table. You can use that as a source or there are, uh, just over a thousand companies in there, and then you can find jobs there and write them back into that table. That's one option. We won't be doing that, but, um, instead we'll just do a basic job search so, for, so that you can see what it looks like and then how you can use it as a base to build other lists. So we could, for example, say whenever a company is hiring for a new VP of sales, then, um, where, you know, there'd be, um, uh, working with a uh, HubSpot, for example, that could be an interesting one. Um, or, and I don't think that's going to get a lot of hits, but it's worth, it's worth trying. Um, and, uh, again, you can limit the results as we did in the previous video. You can see only ones that have recently been posted. Um, but you can also use this as a way to detect technology that may be, um, you cannot detect using, you know, the using builds with, for example. So, um, uh, you can add anything that cannot be detected different ways. So smartly, there's one thing that will come to mind, uh, or Apollo.io, you can use this to find Apollo or smartly users, but, um, that's not really for this video, but just to give an idea of how you can potentially, you know, use the find keywords in job description fields to get a little bit creative. So let's see if we can find any VP of sales just that, um, that will be using HubSpot. If not, we'll take out the HubSpot part and we'll just go with, you know, VP of sales. Well, look at that. Uh, so we found 17 most at the same company, pet food experts, but that doesn't really matter for this same options. You can go with basic or fully enriched. We'll just go with basic because we like to save credits, then you get the, um, the company name, the job title, the location, um, and you know, um, other basic info, but then in here is, um, is a bit more info that, um, that, that is not in here. So you get the, um, uh, the recruiter URL and the recruiter name, the employment type, and then, um, the, you know, the, the direct URL. So you can use this to, for example, reach out directly to the, to the hiring manager or to the recruiter and say, I noticed that you're looking that you're hiring for this or that job. And you know, this is how we can help Then uh, there are a couple of ways that you can use this information. So you don't get the actual job description, which is a little bit of, um, um, a disappointment, but then again, it does give us with a lot of you know, solid information. We know that, um, that HubSpot is in there in the job description. So they'll be using HubSpot, hiring for VP of sales. We know when it was posted, by who it was posted. So that's how we can use this. And um, I'll do another one quickly just to see, um, just to enrich the companies that, um, that we found in the earlier tutorial right here. So we'll go here, table, find jobs from LinkedIn, then add companies at our tutorial, um, thing right here, then, um, um, let's not do any job titles and let's just, uh, see, you know, in the last 90 days, for example, what they posted. There you go. So we find 218 jobs at those 1000 companies. So we can, um, import those to a new table. And then what we can do is we can add those to the other table 
using the uh, the lookup function. Now, how the lookup function works is um, something that we'll discuss later. But basically, you can say, okay, because we'll have the company domain um, in here, which is you know the unique identifier as well as the company URL, which is the same as in the other table, so we can match those together. It was the same way VLOOKUP works in Google Sheets or I think in Excel as well. Uh, I only work in Google Sheets, but um, you can basically do, let's say, a VLOOKUP and say, okay, match up these job posts that we found here at the company table earlier. And then we can see okay, from this company table who are actually hiring and you can use that as, you know, as scoring, um, as a score model or for personalization or however you will feel that uh, however you however you feel that's relevant so that's how you can add some you know some free job posts to your clay data um using the find jobs function or the find job source but you can also use it as a well the source as a main source that you'll um that you start from and then you can use enrichments to then either, you know, find people at these companies or um, uh, find, you know, at these companies, find um, uh, find emails or enrich these companies. And based on, you know, on um, what their unique traits are, you can say, okay, only if they're in this industry, then, you know, continue with the enrichment. So a couple of ways you can use this, but job posting data is always really, really interesting to um to use in your outreach and this is how you can use clay to get that data